Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Servants. Today we are going to tackle a batch of berserk beauties with battlefield based backstories, the demonic oni of Chaldea. The term oni is used to refer to a Japanese goblin or demon. Oni can also just be used as an all encompassing term for something that is demonic. Mind you, there are differences between oni and demons, such as demons generally being angels cast down from heaven, while oni are a race that live alongside humans. Thus, they should be categorized differently, despite their similarities. However, today we get to talk about the Oni. I'll be honest with you, I love all of the Oni of Caldea. Design-wise, personalities, and usability, all of the Oni are unique as characters and honestly deserve more screen time. To date, we have seven unique Oni at Caldea. Shuten Doji, Ibaraki Doji, Suzuka Gozen, Tomoe Gozen, Benny Enma, Kijo Koyo, and Ibuki Doji. I am not including Mama Raiko, who technically does harbor Uchi Gozen, as I would like to do an entirely separate episode on her. Also, when I get to Ibuki Doji, it's going to be very brief to avoid spoilers as best as possible. But, without further ado, let's look at the Oni of Caldea. Let's start with the flagship Oni, and perhaps my favorite of all the Oni designs save for one, Shuten Doji. You know what, we'll do Ibaraki as well for this one because they are so linked together. Shuten's design is based off of her voice actress, Aoyuki, by artist Raita, which is honestly one of the coolest things in Fate. Aoyuki has been immortalized forever as one of the most feared oni in all of Japanese myth. Ibaraki was inspired by the artist glancing over to their kitchen when experiencing artist block and taking inspiration from the bunch of bananas on their counter. Don't quote me on this. Naturally, these two are gender bends, kind of. So I will be referring to them as he's and him's. These two have very similar origins. Both, for instance, began their lives as humans, supposedly. They also have various theories regarding their birth, upbringing, and eventual transformation into Oni. These theories include them both being given up to a temple to be raised, Ibaraki taking 18 months to be born, and when he finally was, he laughed at his mother's pain, causing her to die of shock. Her father would then release her into the woods. Shuten, in much the same way, has muddled regional origins. In the Ibuki region of Japan, it is said that Shuten was born the child of a snake father and a human mother. We will get into this a bit later. Another is that he was a page for the same temple as Ibaraki, the Kokojoji. He also has a story about him being born 16 months into his mother's pregnancy with a full mouth of teeth. He was able to speak like a 6 year old and had the strength of a 16 year old. By the time he was actually 6, he was given up to the temple. These two would supposedly meet at the temple and engage in sumo wrestling competitions. Both were hailed as being beautiful boys despite their devious nature, and the girls at the time would shower them both with letters regaling their love and admiration for them. However, the pair would supposedly suffer from this. Ibaraki received a letter smeared in the blood of a sender, supposedly. He licked the blood and was transformed into an oni, fleeing into the mountains. Shuten would receive a letter from a girl who had died believing that Shuten would reject them. As such, she put a curse on the letter, and when Shuten opened it, he was sprayed with a thick powder which turned him into an oni as well. He too would flee into the mountains. These are both one of various theories. So there's a bunch of different ones that are out there on this. These are the ones I'm going to personally stick with for now. Once again, there are several versions of the story, and I'm going to do my best to make it easy to understand. But for now, I want to look at the oldest recorded instance of Shuten and Ibaraki post-meetup. Around the year 995, the Emperor began receiving reports about missing people. Too many to be ignored. The court's diviner, Abe no Seme, yes, this dude, had determined that the Oni King of Mount Oe was responsible for these disappearances. The Emperor sent Raiko and her four retainers to dispose of the threat. On their way up to Mount Oe, they ran into four kami disguised as travelers. Upon telling the kami of their mission, they offered to lend a hand and provided the group with the garb of traveling monks. The group, now four stronger in disguise, traveled further up the mountain. They would stop again after happening upon an old woman who was washing clothing in the river. When asked what she was doing so far up the mountain, she explained that she was a captive of the Oni. She then told the group that the missing girls had been turned into slaves to entertain and serve the Oni, but if the Oni grew bored of them for any reason, they would kill them, eat their flesh, and then drink their blood. The men were being used as slave labor as well. When the group finally reached the Oni's location, they asked the Oni King if they would be permitted to stay the night, as they had a long trek ahead of them. On a whim, the Oni King agreed to let them stay and offer them sake. The Oni King revealed himself to be Shuten Doji, the sake-loving Oni as his men would call him. 
and told the group how he and his companion Oni had been driven out of their ancestral home of Hira Mountain after a temple had been built there. In vengeance, he planned to launch an attack on Kyoto for wronging him and his troops. Raiko then offered Shuten a bottle of sake that the group had poisoned beforehand, and upon drinking it, Shuten became extremely intoxicated and passed out. The group then removed their monk's attire and fitted themselves with their armor and weapons. The Kami held Shuten's limbs while Raiko severed his head. However, this didn't kill him initially, and the head launched itself at Raiko's. Having anticipated such a trick, Raiko had worn multiple helmets and was able to survive the attack. The group then went about exterminating all of the Oni on the mountain, and once it had been cleared out, they brought the kidnapped people back to their homes and presented the severed head of Shuten Doji as proof of their accomplishments. However, as we know from fate, Ibaraki supposedly survived this encounter. He would go on to Kyoto's Rashomon Gate, where he would harass and attack passersby. One of Raiko's retainers, and our very own bull cutted lad Watanabe no Suna, decided enough was enough and went to confront the Oni. When he reached Rashomon, he was attacked by Ibaraki. However, being one of the most skilled boyers at the time, he was easily able to defend himself. He managed to get on the offensive and severed one of Ibaraki's arms. Screaming in pain, the Oni ran off. Watanabe took the arm and wrapped it in a cloth, then put it into a chest so that it would not be lost. Some days later, Watanabe's elderly aunt came to visit having heard about his exploits at Rashomon. He regaled her with the story of the encounter and how he had severed the arm of the Oni. Curious about such a thing, the aunt asked to see it. Then, when Watanabe opened the chest, his aunt transformed into Ibaraki, grabbing the arm and fleeing the scene. The samurai was so baffled at the whole event that he did not give chase. However, Ibaraki was never heard from again. So for those of you wondering why Ibaraki has the morph skill, this is why. So here's some fun bonus trivia for all of you. 1. Ibaraki is sometimes depicted as a female in the legends and as the lover slash wife to Shuten. So this may be a factor that is played into the relationship for fate. Two, given that Raiko is a real person, this Mount Oe extermination likely did happen, but not with Oni. It is possible that the mountain was overrun with bandits instead of Oni, and the group was sent to destroy them. But as time went on, the bandits became Oni and the myth solidified itself. Or, everything I said earlier was real and the veil between the natural and supernatural is thin, and a group of Oni happened to slip into a reality. But that's just speculation. Now we're on to Suzuka Gozen. Both she and Tomoe Gozen fall into the same category of historical figures that were probably real people, but are possibly fictionalized and have extremely limited information about them. The Tomoe in Fate, for example, has more information on her than the real one. But here's what I found. Her legend can be traced back to the life of a real-life samurai named Sakunoe no Tamuramaro. He was sent on an Oni exterminating expedition at Mount Suzuka. And one of the legends is that he fell in love with one of the Oni, a beautiful one named Akutama. She was a practitioner of witchcraft and would assist her husband in the extermination of the other Oni. Why she chose to do this is up in the air, likely along the lines of true love, but legitimately that is everything that I can find on her. According to fate, she is the daughter of the demon king of the fourth heaven, but I don't want to explore this concept too deeply. I couldn't find anything on it. I almost want to say this is another Skahawk situation where they took a very very minor character and essentially made them an OC. I can't definitively prove this, but it's leaning more towards that from what I can find. If you have more information on her that I'm just not finding, please tell me in the contents because I love her character in the Fate series and would love to know more about her. We do, however, know more about Tomoe. She was the daughter of an influential family that were strong supporters of the family of her would-be husband, Minamoto no Yoshinaka. Her mother was actually her husband's wet nurse, so take that as you will. Minamoto no Yoshinaka would become a powerful lord and be a participant in the Genpi War, which is the same war that Ushiwakamaru and Benkei would participate in. However, Tomoe and Ushi would be on opposing sides, the Minamoto and the Taira respectively. Tomoe herself would be in charge of 300 men and fought against an army of 2,000. Despite these odds, she would manage to emerge victorious. In 1184, during the Battle of Owazu, Yoshinaka saw that they were set to be defeated, but could not find a route in which to escape. Thus, he steeled himself to die on the battlefield, but told Tomoe to escape, as dying next to a woman would be dishonorable. The accounts differ on whether she actually escaped, later becoming a nun at a Buddhist monastery, or if she stayed and fought to the death alongside her husband. But you may be wondering, why is she classified as an Oni? Well, let me tell you. During this battle, she is famous for ripping the head off of Honda no Morishige, with her bare hands. She was dumped in Oni for her ferocious attitude and unparalleled strength. There is also an account of her taking the head of the Musashi clan's leader and giving it to her husband as a gift. Frankly, she's pretty metal. 
or art designing game, down to the colors, comes directly from a piece of art by Shitomi Kongetsu. So I said Shuten's design was my favorite earlier. I lied. Benny Enma's design is impeccable. Takehita Harada's ability to make adorable characters should not be underestimated. Her story is one that is from a fairy tale called the Tongue Cut Sparrow. I will summarize it for you now, but if you wish to read it for yourself, go check out the link I will have in the description into the lit to go website. Long ago there lived an old married couple, a woodcutter and his wife. The woodcutter was incredibly kind, but his wife was greedy. The woodcutter made his living through chopping wood and fishing, but never profited too much, much to his wife's displeasure. One day the man ventured into the mountains and happened upon a sparrow on the ground. It was in great pain and chirping in distress. Feeling sorry for it, he took the sparrow home, much to his wife's displeasure. She complained that all the thing would do was eat what little food they had. However, the husband kept the bird regardless. Eventually, the man needed to go collect wood from the mountains once more and left his wife alone with the bird. She refused to feed it and went off fishing instead. While she was gone, the sparrow, hungry from being neglected by the wife, found some starch and ate it. It would eventually eat all of the starch in the house. When the wife returned and saw this, she grabbed the bird and cut out its tongue before shooing it off into the mountains. When the husband came back to see this, he immediately went searching for the bird. Employing the help of the other sparrows, he would eventually be led to a bamboo grove, where a party of sparrows led him to the bird that he had saved. The sparrows celebrated the man's kindness and they all danced and partied joyously. Before he left to go home, the sparrows offered him a gift a large basket, and a smaller one. Being humble and due to his age, he picked the smaller one as it would likely be lighter and easier to carry. He thanked the sparrows and returned home. Once there, he opened the box and discovered a myriad of treasures inside. He told his wife what had happened and she would left to go retrieve the large basket. The sparrows welcomed her as well and being kind, offered her the large basket. However, they warned her not to open it before she got home. Being greedy, she couldn't resist the temptation and opened the box on her way. Venomous snakes and creatures sprang forth from it, startling her, and she fell down the mountain. It's assumed that this killed her, but that's not confirmed. Most of this can be seen from her skills in Noble Phantasm. However, a tongue being cut out does not an Oni make. No, instead, according to fate, this is her story. She was a young girl who lived in a brothel, and in an attempt to escape this life, she wandered into the mountains where she would eventually die of exposure. Enma, the king and judge of hell, took pity on her and made her the proprietress of the Mayawiga named the Enma Tai. Uh, for those wondering, a Mayawiga is something like a ghost inn. Lost travelers can wander into them and usually find them all well kept as if someone was just there, and occasionally they can become possessed or haunted by the occupants. It's a fairly ambiguous concept, but an interesting one nonetheless. Benny Enma took a fancy to the nearby human village and would visit from time to time, but was eventually caught by an angry old woman. The rest is similar to the above story. So, she became an Oni because she is the adopted daughter of the King of Hell. She also occasionally hosts cooking classes for other heroic spirits, being a master chef because why not? Our final Oni of the night is Kijo Koyo. No, I did not forget about Ibuki, we'll get to that here in a sec. A Kijo is just an all-encompassing term for a female demon. Her name was Koyo, but she was also known as Momiji. There are two accounts accredited to her. One, that she was a leader of a group of bandits that stood against the imperial court, and that she taught people how to read and write and was capable of healing illnesses. However, when Taira no Korimochi came to subdue her and her bandits, she turned into a vicious oni and attacked the group. Despite this, she would still be defeated and killed. The second account is from an old no play. For those who are unfamiliar with no theater, you will likely recognize the masks that are used. Specifically, the Oni mask, also known as a Hanya mask. This is used to show a jealous or angry woman. The masks of No Theater are all meant to represent certain emotions or character archetypes. We see Koyo appear in the play Momijigari. The play opens to a woman and her party in the mountains admiring the change of colors in the maple leaves. Note that this is a key part in Koyo's in-game art design. As they are drinking and admiring the view, a soldier appears in the distance, having went out deer hunting. This soldier happened to be Taira no Korimochi, who dismounts from his horse in order to not disturb the women. However, they beckon him over to drink with them. He accepts and they drink until he has become thoroughly intoxicated. However, the women keep feeding him alcohol until he passes out. As he drifts off to sleep, he can hear Koyo saying that he should never wake up. Now in a dream, he is approached by the spirit of the Hachiman Shrine who tells him that the woman it was in fact a Kijo and must be slain. The spirit presents him with a sacred sword and forces him awake. 
upon his awakening, the woman turns into a ferocious fire-breathing Oni, but is slain by the soldier. Fun fact, a rendition of this play was filmed in 1899 and was the very first Japanese film. As to why she appears as a dinosaur, this is entirely a fate invention and is claimed to be because she saw the skeleton of a great dragon in the mountains, which was likely a fossilized dinosaur. All right, I'm only gonna touch on this briefly. As mentioned prior, Ibuki Doji is entirely a fate invention. She is the regional variant of Shuten Doji, the one that was the offspring of the snake god and a woman. That's all I'm getting into with her as I wanna save myself from spoilers as best that I can given I play exclusively on NA. From what it seems, she's like Shuten Alter, but not really. It's complicated. From what I can gather, she's like a more divine, closer to a god version of Shuten Doji. But that's it! The Oni of Chaldea, in the books. I love this topic a lot, as Japanese myths and legends are some of my favorites. But thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Also in the comments, feel free to request a servant so I can add them to my doc. Like the video as it really does help out the channel. Subscribe so that you can catch these as they go up. Follow me on Twitch for significantly less structured content. Check out my Twitter for updates on various things. But until next time, keep your chin up. Peace.